Hi, this is Vander here today with Brian from uh, the Deck of Many booth. Uh, we're here to talk to you a little bit about Humblewood and probably a few of their other more fun treats. Now, tell me a little bit about um, your wonderful Kickstarter that I had so much fun checking out before. <laughs> Uh, so last year, uh, in March, uh, we did our Kickstarter for Humblewood. Um, it was started off, uh, we wanted to create, uh, we partnered with Leisha Hannigan, who created these really awesome, like, D&D uh, &D anthropomorphic animal drawings on Twitter, and we really liked those, and we said, hey, we can make this into, we can make this into a campaign setting. Uh, how would you like to art direct it? So we partnered with her, we, we got, a few races done and we were like okay we'll start off with like some bird folk and work our way up and then the kickstarter just kept doing so well we just kept adding more and more content to the point that we we introduced like uh, other woodland creatures like more forest based woodland creatures and the full rules uh and then we got to the point where we added uh, a pantheon of gods and new class options and then uh and an adventure for for new players to get introduced to humblewood so that they can continue to learn more about the setting um, we ended up doing a uh, million dollars on Kickstarter. Uh, kind of blew our minds uh, a little bit. As it does. Right? <laughs> um, but it's been really great to see the, the fan reactions to, to Humblewood. Uh, the, the accessibility and the amount of people that are really excited about doing this. Uh, I think we all kind of grew up with, uh, you know, the Disney uh, Robin Hood. Right, like you know, Maid Marian and uh, Little John and uh, Red Wall and Mouse Guard, like all those kind of things that are just baked into our childhood, and it's kind of fun to be able to play that in a D and D setting. Yeah, sometimes you just want to be like a cleric hedgehog and run around and beat up people. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, we had a character. The uh, we ran a game for our, our our trainees here at the booth, and one guy saw the. He was like, "I can be a hedgehog." Yes. Uh, and then he saw the barred hedgehog in there, and he's like, "I want to play that, but I want a didgeridoo instead of instead of a lute." And I was like, "You do you, man. Let's go." So you're talking about accessibility uh, with your game. Could you expand on that just a little more? So uh, the example I normally use is um, so my nieces, uh, they're nine, and I was really excited to try to get them into role playing games because they've been very interested in the stuff that I do uh, day to day and helping out with stuff like this. And when I showed them a, a player's handbook, they would find the they're twins, and they're they're both girls, and uh, I call them Optimus Prime and Megatron. It's fun. Um, they uh, they would only find the the female character art that they could they, they thought looked like what they wanted to, and then they, that would be what they would focus on. They'd be like, I just want to play that character. I show them Humblewood, and they're excited about everything. They want to be a deer or an owl or a pigeon. I was really surprised by the pigeon part, but you know, uh, but it's really awesome to see how excited they are for it. And then as we're here at shows and to watch uh, a couple come up and the girlfriend being like, I will play this. I'm not playing the rest of that, but I will play this. And he's like, you're not going to play this. You know, literally, I, I would play this. Um, and just seeing uh, more groups being excited, I think, as we as d and become more popular, thanks to like Stranger Things and Critical Role, we're seeing a, a change in the demographic that's really into D&D. And I think content like this really helps that along. Like things that uh, it's not very gender specific. Uh, it's more for everybody. So besides, uh, obviously, like you said, accessibility is great. And for younger players, people who could look at it and be like, hey, any character I can get into from this. But you also talked about uh, potential new mechanics and how the the expanse of D&D uh, &D in general. Is there... Uh, for like old school players or people who have been playing for a while, is there a specific mechanic or anything that you think will like really grab those new players that is just going to be our old players? That's something they're really going to love. What I found the from people that have been playing the game for a while that are really excited about it, it's more the world building and the setting more than any kind of like mechanic or rule uh, that they've been excited for. The for the bird folk, the the fun bin is the thing has been glide. Like the ability to basically like functionally feather fall if you're falling like you can just boom and kind of fly down um being able to play bird races like being able to like wing flat to jump up higher or do more long jumps have added an interesting like three-dimensional variant to the game that i haven't seen a lot of players engage in uh in the games that i've been playing so like uh the gerbine for the mouse can just jump up 
and like so they're like on the ground now they're in a tree now they're on the ground again now they're in a tree now I'm backstabbing you now I'm back in a tree right um, and it's been really fun to see players engaging around that uh, so we try to make that very intentional in how we designed the campaign uh, or the adventure that's in the book for your you said there was an adventure already built into the book um, can I ask what levels those are so the adventure takes you from first to fifth level uh, it's designed to take players and GMs through a, a whirlwind tour of Humblewood, the set, the, the main area setting. Uh, so you start off in a town that's uh, where some people have gone off to investigate what's happening in the setting that's causing a lot of uh, repercussions that, that spread throughout the setting of Humblewood. Uh, so Brian, where can we find this online? Obviously on the deck of many .com, but is there anywhere else that your products are being sold? Uh, for the most part, it's the deck of many .com. Uh, If you go to humblewood.com uh, or humblewood.net, you'll go. It'll take you to our web pages where you can see the content that we're putting out there. Uh, a great place to reach out to us: uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Search uh, the deck of many. That's us. Uh, you'll see a nice little like stylized uh, dragon D. Uh, that's that's us. Um, or if you see the humblewood, you're you're probably close to the right place. Um, we, we do work with, uh, on an individual basis, retailers and companies uh, for to distribute our, our content as well. Thank you very much, Brian. All right, back to you guys.